Good day everybody, welcome to another injector testing video. In the previous videos we've used a multimeter and we use a special injector tool which will pulse the injector to determine if you have a faulty one or not. Now, besides for using a professional scanner, we're going to use another tool that's not that expensive. It's the Power Probe 4. It's got an injector tester on it. So we're going to test the injectors and we're going to run it through the cycle and we're going to compare them all and see what the measurements are. If you're new to my channel and haven't seen any previous videos, you guys will know the Power Probe 4 is by far my best troubleshooting tool that I have in my garage, besides for a high-end scanner. Now, what I got set up right now in the Power Probe is a back probe that we're going to probe the injector circuits. So I got the instructions out right here. We're gonna go through and show you guys what exactly it can do. Number one, on milliseconds, injector pulse on time. This is the total amount of time that the fuel injector is energized and supplying fuel to the cylinder. We're gonna be able to see that. Number two, inductive kick voltage. Normal inductive kicks range between 55 and 90 volts. You should see a similar voltage number from each of the injectors on the engine. Note the height of the inductive kick is sometimes cut off by internal ECM diode to about 35, 45 volts. This test does not apply to high pressure injectors used on diesel engines and gasoline direct injected engines, which the Jeep isn't. Three, ECM ground voltage. The engine computer activates each fuel injector by completing the ground circuit with an internal transistor switch. When the fuel injector is energized, the ECM ground voltage should be close to zero volts. Actual measured ECM ground voltage can vary. It may be closer to 0 0.05 volts because the internal resistance of the switching transistor. And finally, number four, injector supply voltage. This is the battery power being supplied to the fuel injector itself. Measured voltage should be close to full battery voltage. There may be small voltage drops in the circuit. However, anything more than 0.5 volt loss from the source battery voltage should be investigated. So coming over here on the Jeep 4.0, what we got in common all the way through, as you're going to see, is that... All these green lines right here, that's going to be the positive. So what we need to probe are all these colored wires because that's the control wires coming from the computer and that's what we're going to be reading off of. The thing about the power probe is that it comes with like 20 feet of wire. So, you know, you're never going to turn up short. That was smart. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into fuel injector. And now we're going to be ready to start her up and then we're going to plug her in. Probe the injector that was giving us the fault code. So you can see right here all my values, um, my ejector pulse has changed, obviously because the engine has gotten warmer, it was a cold start. So if I go back to number one, the injector pulse is going to be rigged pretty close to the same. I'm going to go back. So here we are, back on injector one, like I said, the pulse has changed. And of course, people are going to ask, you can turn the beeping off. So I just took some pictures, we can look at it right now, when it's cold, like I said before, uh, the pulse is going to be different, 14.1, ECM, 0.25, 58.7, injector 2,
there you have it so you can see right here going through them all nothing is telling me that something is bad well I hope you guys enjoyed the video that was a pretty short test of using the power probe 4 one of the many features that the power probe 4 has to test the fuel injectors and has numerous other functions that you can use like I said it's probably the best troubleshooting tool that you could have in your shop for testing automotives ATVs boats any kind of 12 volt DC circuits anyways We've done three injector tests now and haven't found any issues whatsoever. So I'm going to end the video there. So if you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. And we're going to continue the series of trying to figure out what the misfire code is from. We're going to start looking at the engine now. So I'm going to talk to you guys later.